hey, we're about to finish up this project over here. Got three of the retainer walls built. Then I started looking at the uh, rest of the bay here. And we didn't have a retainer wall here. There's actually one there, but it's a little low. And some of the larger storms like the Hurricane Ivans and that comes through would definitely get over the top of this. So talk to them about extending the height of this retainer wall. So that's what we're working on right now. We're gonna go ahead and dig this out right behind the existing wood retainer wall. Extend the height of this wall up, probably about two and a half foot. It's gonna really seal this property up real good for long-term protection on this property. We're gonna take the wall from this retainer wall right here that we just installed on the wetland side. We're gonna go up probably about a foot and a half or so where you see that nail. Right on the inside of this old retainer wall, we're gonna dig this out, put a new wall in its place. Got a lot of palm roots here to, to deal with. Already started excavating this corner right here. Work it all the way down to the other wall we built on the other side and connect into it. Like always on this project, we'll be using rough cut timbers, which is good for uh, fresh water and some of it's good for saltwater immersion. It all depends on what's available at the time. But this won't ever be in contact with water, so we go with a little bit higher grade of treatment, then we don't have to worry about it. We'll be connecting into this whaler right here, which is that lower two by double tube eight beam right there. We're connecting that same elevation. Run it all the way down parallel with this wall, just on the inside of it. Extend the elevation of the wall just a little bit. Going pretty good with this trenching here. It looks like it's an extension of the wall that was here. You can see the old seawall cut across the property. And then I get to this part here and contractor that uh, replaced this original wall Looks like he decided to bury all this trash behind the wall. So now I get to excavate all that trash down about four or five foot, which is gonna be really fun. Don't know why people are still burying trash. That's just crazy. All the pilings are set. Now we got the laser level out and we're shooting the elevations of the whalers for the uh, new retainer wall. This is actually going to act as a fence also. It's not going to be backfilled all the way to the top. So it'll give them the elevation that they need for a fence. So we won't have to put a fence on top because they've got a pool going on the back side of it. When using a rough cut one by eights, that's not always true. So sometimes we've got to cut a little bit of a wedge to get the wall stood up level. You can see here, we've got a slight wedge being cut into this board and then he'll get it installed on the uh, seawall and it'll level the uh, boards right back up again. The palm roots are so thick in this area right here, I was able to dig down four to five foot and the uh, hillside didn't cave in. There's such a big root mass right there. Gave us a little tight working area to uh, get this wall installed, but it worked out just fine. You can see here, my guys take real good pride in their work, making sure every little gap is as tight as they could possibly get it, using a cat's call to try and pry over the one by eight to get it sealed up nice and tight.
side below the uh, lower whaler here. What we've done is when we dug out this front uh, retainer wall, or actually sea wall, we had to cut all the tieback systems. So what we did is we tied the front retainer wall into this new retainer wall that we're installing. And once we tie back this retainer wall, they'll all be tied back together. We installed large uh, square washers on the front side of this wall. Here we're drilling the uh, pilings for the uh, tieback system, installing the uh, 5 8 by 12 foot type 316 stainless steel tieback rods. This connects to a uh, 6 to 8 foot piling that we drive down the ground, install a rough cut 2 by 8 by 2 foot drag plate on it, drill that, run the rod through that, put a large square washer on the outside, and a nut. All right, we got all the bulkheading installed here and the tie back system installed, a little backfill on the back side. Now it's time to uh, start installing the accord limestone. We're just gonna build the elevation of this rock up to the existing wall that we just put in. The installation of quarried limestone helps dissipate the energy of the wave when it's hitting the uh, seawall. Making sure everything is level on the top now, we're going to be installing a 2x12 finish cut top cap. It'll be fastened down with stainless steel 3 inch screws. Pretty proud of this project here. It actually turned out like a showpiece. This retainer wall also acts as a fence for their pool, giving them the privacy in their pool and also giving protection from storm surges. And all in all, we've got 613 foot of wall installed on this property. Here's how we tie our corners together. We've got three bolts going through both pilings. And then another lower tie back going back into the wall also. You see all the tie backs on this wall here are a little bit lower, we got a pool going behind the wall, so we dropped our tie backs down so they won't be in the way of the pool. This is our drain system to allow the water or the hydraulic pressure from behind the wall to escape through this drain line right here. It's actually a well point that we put in. It goes back about four foot back behind the wall. This is the before shot of the project. I want to give you an idea of the major transformation that happened on this property.
Hey y'all, thanks for checking out this video. Really love showing off our work and our creative abilities. Love the design portion of this project. If y'all would, subscribe to the channel, like and share. Got a really cool project coming up next we just started on. It's going to have a concrete top cap on a vinyl seawall.